Hello, my name is Mahadevan and I am a professor of applied mathematics of physics and organismic and evolutionary biology at Harvard University. Amazing. Are you going to show us a demo today? I would like to try and say something about the role of chance by thinking about the humblest version of a game, which is tossing a coin. And so I have a quarter uh, with me here. And uh, if I ask you, uh, what is the probability of heads? Uh, what might your answer be? 50-50. Why do you say it should be 50-50? Because that's chance. Because that's chance and you made a critical assumption and the assumption is that there are two sides to the coin. They're equally likely and therefore if they're equally likely and the, uh, of course therefore it has to want, land on one side or the other, you say therefore the sum must be equal to 100% and so each possibility has 50% chance but you assume that it would never land on its edge. Now, of course, that's true for a very thin coin. But if I took a number of coins and I glued them together, now the chance of it landing on its side has gone up. And in fact, if I had glued a very, very large number of coins together and made a cylindrical uh, a stack of coins a mile long, and then I tossed it, then what would the chance of the coin landing on its side be? Quite a bit higher. Almost 100%. And what would the chance, therefore, of landing on its heads be? Well, if it's 100%, then 0%. Exactly. So one limit where you had a very thin coin, uh, it always landed either on heads or tails. The other limit, when it was an infinitely long coin, it never landed. So then you can ask, is it possible to create a coin so that one third of the time it landed heads, one third of the time it landed tails, and one third on the side? So you can use it to essentially determine a bet with three people, not two. You can use mathematics to essentially answer the question. Um, and the answer turns out to be something very interesting. The answer turns out to be, if you have about eight quarters that you stick together, then if you now toss that, on average, you will see a third of the time it lands heads, tails, and a third of the time it ends up on its sides. I taught a course last spring called I Wonder Why in which I spent some time telling our students, uh, 60 students or so, about how we think about, how we should think about the world. And one of the things that I was trying to inculcate is, if you like, a way of questioning everything, seeing what everybody has seen, and perhaps thinking what nobody has thought. And in that context, um, I asked students this uh, little question. We worked through some of the mathematics, and then there were 60 students in the class and I asked everybody to do an experiment. Some students were given a single coin. Uh, some students were given, well, they weren't given coins. They were given little, uh, I didn't have that much money. So uh, uh, I gave them a, a cut of a rod, of a long rod. Some were given longer, some were given shorter rods. And I asked them to go away and toss them and give us the results so that we can plot how the probability of heads varied as a function of the length of the stack relative to the diameter. So we got about 6,000 or 8,000, maybe even more, I think, uh, uh, um, uh, final results, and we plotted them. And we plotted them and compared them to the theory. It worked really uh, remarkably well. And inspired by that, I wrote a little sonnet, which I'd like to close with. I'll tell you the title of the paper, which we haven't written, but I was hoping that we can eventually write. And the title is, Can We Tilt the Odds of a Coin Toss? The abstract is, yes. And here's the little sonnet that I tried. You can judge. See the humble coin in parabolic flight on a path prescribed by Newton's laws. While outcomes flicker in the clearest light, uncertainty reigns and gives one pause. A cylinder long may land upon its side. I wonder why pondered students' minds. The ratio of width to the diameter does abide, which von Neumann cleverly into thirds assigned. But chance is not maximally blind. An angular momentum unlocks the key. In processions where biases unwind, the coin's true fate might not what it seems be. From the gen ed view, every motion we discern shows magic where physics and chance Turn. Thank you so much.